this one will be game changer for you. Never, ever, ever use this one. I absolutely hate it. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easy website creation tool. Today, I'm going over every miniature painting tool I have and I will rank it in a tier list. And by the end of the video, you will know which ones are the best and which ones should you avoid. And we are going to start with paints. So the first ones on the list are Citadel paints and these paints are pretty good, with the exception of white and really light grays, because I painted entire army with this bad boy and let me tell you, it was horrible. So they have layers, they have your bases, etc. And the important distinction is that you have to thin them in a different way. So when you take something like, for example, AK Interactive Paint, you can use it pretty much as it is, straight out of the bottle. Maybe just add a little bit of water, but for GW, you really have to add more. They are a bit more expensive and also these bottles uh, are not good. I much more prefer dropper bottles. So because of that, I will have to give GW a uh, B tier. And when we are at it, we are gonna talk about contrast paint. I don't use these as they are intended to use as a thick layer over primed miniatures. I usually build a grayscale on my models with my airbrush or simply build some highlights uh, with white or really light gray and then spray these bad boys over it. And that makes for a really fast and effective paint job. And for this purpose, they are fantastic. And since these are better than the standard GW paints, I will put them in A tier. Now we are gonna move to some classics and these are Vallejo paints. I love these, they have multiple ranges as well. They have model color, they have game color, but either way, but either way, I absolutely love these. Uh, maybe the only flaw that I have noticed is that when you thin them too much, they tend to get sort of satin, almost glossy finish. But you can easily mitigate it with some sort of varnish or some kind of glaze medium. They are also way cheaper than GW pots and dropper bottle is superior. And because of that, I will put them very comfortably into A tier. Similar to Vallejo, at least for me, is AK Interactive. Now these don't tend to get very glossy or satin when you thin them too much. Also their white is absolutely fantastic. If you are struggling to find a good white paint, uh, this one will be game changer for you. Otherwise, these are my workhorse paints and I use them the most. They dry quite matte, not super matte, like let's say Scale 75 or Chimera colors, but that's actually what I like. And because of that, I will give AK Interactive also an A tier. What I got here is Army Painter and I have to say that I really don't like Army Painter products. <gasps> My experience is that they tend to get very glossy when they dry, which is definitely not great. So when it comes to Army Painter, I really don't like them very much and I will put them into C tier. However, if you like Army Painter, that's absolutely fine. Keep in mind that this is just my personal tier list and my own opinion. This is gonna get even more controversial because there is scale 75 and I have to say that I don't really like it. Unfortunately, the issue with very matte paints is that you can get quite chalky finish. And in my opinion, when I tried to glaze scale 75 colors, uh, this is exactly what happened. Now, this doesn't mean that these are low quality paints. I think that they are high quality, but I don't like working with them. But when it comes to my opinion, I will have to place scale 75 into B tier. Now we're gonna talk about golden artist colors. Uh, these are fantastic, but I use them for only one purpose and that is airbrushing. That's pretty much the same approach that Sergio Calvo uses them for. So you basically thin them down very much, use a bit of matte varnish because otherwise these are very glossy as you can see. And then he sprays them on the mini and basically shades them. So unfortunately, because these are just single purpose paints, at least for me, I will have to place them into B tier. When it comes to Chimera colors, I have love-hate relationship with them. Perhaps you know that you have this set of like 14 or 13 paints and you can mix them together to get pretty much any color imaginable. However, I don't think that this necessarily works because for them to cover on the mini, you have to add a bit of gray or black or white. So you almost always have to desaturate them a little bit. This problem is especially obvious when it comes to phthalo pigments because these are super transparent and they also sometimes get quite chalky when you thin them down quite a bit so I'm not a fan of that but I guess that's always the case with matte paints. What I like though is that you can add these into your standard paints and make them super saturated and vibrant so it's not all bad and I guess that I will have to put camera colors into B tier as well. So acrylic inks, these are absolutely fantastic, but also I use them mostly with my airbrush. If you take white, for example, you can use it for as a little highlight, but also you can add it into your chalky paint 
to make it smoother. When it comes to these colored ones, I also use them with my airbrush and in a very similar way that I use contrast paint. So for me, these have really specific use cases, uh, but I guess I will put them into B tier as a whole. You guys probably know that I don't really paint with oil paints. This is one exception because I use this one for my oil washes. And this is excellent stuff if you have plenty of armor in your army and you want to shade it fast and just the recesses. You mix it with white spirit and then apply on your minis and basically it flows into recesses and that's great. But you still have to work with white spirit, which is not a pleasant experience and yeah, it's a messy process. But either way, I will definitely put this oil paint into A tier because it's high quality pigment and I like that it shades the recesses very easily. A substitute for that are these pen liners that are from AK Interactive, but you can use, for example, Temia pen liners. I think I have it right here. Yeah, you can use like this one. The great thing about these is that you already have the right amount of white spirit and pigments in them, so you don't have to mix it yourself. And that also means that you don't really have control over the intensity, which is what I like about the oil washes. And because of that, I will put pen liner into B tier. When it comes to primers, I absolutely love to use this one. It's from Vallejo and it's for airbrush. And it's usually the case that when you use airbrush, you get very smooth finish on your primed models. So that's great. It also isn't super satin or super matte. So it's a happy medium. And for that reason, I will absolutely put it into A tier. Some more primers that I have for an airbrush are these two bad boys from AK Interactive. And while I love the products of this brand, I don't really like these two. Uh, they are super matte or quite matte for a primer and they also can chip off relatively easily at least more easily than this one but either way they are matte not a huge fan so i will place these two bad boys into b tier or you know what, actually C tier, perhaps. When it comes to Chaos Black, it used to be my favorite primer, but then I bought an airbrush. This one actually is quite satin, almost glossy, and you don't have that precise control that you have with airbrush, but that's fine. I still like it very much, uh, but now that I have a spray can of this bad boy, I use it mostly for terrain. So it sits pretty comfortably in B tier. Now, on the other hand, the counterpart of Chaos Black is Corax White, and I absolutely hate this one. It's super easy to get grainy surface with this, so, I don't think it's good for beginners. Of course, you have to check for weather and your environment and stuff, but um, honestly, it's not user-friendly. Even I have quite mixed results with this one, so I will put it into C tier. And finally, Army Painter. I absolutely hate it. Man, f*** this primer. I remember that I sprayed some of my models with this spray and oh man, so much texture. So of course, I had to strip them with isopropyl alcohol and now they are fine, but holy shit, I don't like it. So this one is 100% F tier. Now I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. I am pretty sure that some of you guys wanted to create a website at some point in your life. And if you are like me, maybe you gave up on it because you didn't know where to start or you don't like coding. Luckily with Squarespace, creating your own website is very easy. Simply choose a template that you like and start from there. For example, if you need to upload your logo or any other photo, just drag and drop it right here and there you go. And like this, you can customize pretty much anything. So if you are in the market for a website, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you are ready to start, go to squarespace.com slash zumikito to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Starting with thick plastic glue, it's fine. You know, thin is perhaps a bit better. Uh, these two are pretty similar. I cannot tell a difference. I mean, it's a bit here. Now, when it comes to this, this is way better. If you didn't get Tamiya extra thin cement yet, you definitely need it. So there are two major reasons why you really want this. First one is obviously you glue your plastic parts together and there you go. You don't have to worry about some spillage because it's thin after all. You get this little brush and you can apply it with that. So that's great. But more importantly, you can take a sprue, your leftover sprue, and uh, basically cut it into small pieces and stick it in here. And then what you get is 
Sprugu. And you can use this to fill any gaps that you have on your mini, which is fantastic. So as you can probably already tell, this one goes straight into S tier. Now when it comes to great glues, this one is my preferred super glue. I don't use any other super glue. What I like about this one is that you always get the glue through and you don't ever have to use a needle. So if you need a super glue for your resin miniatures or terrain, this is definitely the way to go. And for that reason, I will put it into S tier. But you know what? It's not actually on the same level as extra thin cement. So let's put it into A tier. A little hand drill for your space marines to have a barrel drilled and for your minis to pin. I guess that this is pretty essential, but there is nothing magical about it. So let's put it into B tier. These are very cheap nail clippers and I use them to clip out your parts out of a screw. And it's pretty much the same story. So I will put it into B tier as well. These are hobby files from Tamiya and you pretty much get what you pay for. There is nothing special about them. So let's put them into B tier. Now we will rank this, yes, this, a cutting mat. I really do think that you need some sort of mat for your hobbying and this fills this purpose. This is another B tier item. So let's put it right here. On the other hand, you can also have this cutting mat. And this one is better because you can place here your color wheel. Uh, you have your ratios for your paint thinning. And this mat is definitely better than the black one, uh, but I don't really use it for one simple reason. And that's because I like black background when I am filming. So the Redgrass Games mat, I will put into A tier. Having some sort of knife or blade is always useful because you need to always cut some things. You can also clean the mold lines with this or just use a file, that's fine. I think that it would be better to use some X-Acto knife or something like that, uh, but I just didn't get to buy it. So yeah, pretty essential item, still a B tier. Tweezers are very useful, especially when you are working on your bases or you need to place your decal, but still nothing special about it. It works fine. So still into B tier it goes. When it comes to this hobby so I really thought that it's gonna be great for rebasing your minis, but I think that it works better for cutting off some parts on your minis and then gluing them together, essentially reposing your mini. So while it works for cutting off a piece of your model, it doesn't really work that well for rebasing purposes and because of that unfortunately i will have to place it into c tier we are gonna start with the easiest and the easiest way to hold your model is your hand now obviously when your painting session is long this is gonna hurt as fuck and for that reason using just your hand as a painting handle especially for small miniatures is dog shit. and we will place it into f tier and now let's talk about real painting handles so for example i got this one with this metal rod uh, i don't really use this one all that much but i will explain that in a minute i think it's good because you can rest your other hand like this and you get more stability to be more accurate this thing right here is also removable now if you are wondering what brand is that it's yukochi I guess. It's also magnetized, so if you magnetize your bases, it's also useful in that regard. And overall, I would probably place this one into A tier. Then we have Redgrass Games painting handle, and this one is fantastic, mainly because it's also magnetized, but mainly because the ergonomic grip. So it really rests nicely in your hand. You can also remove these and replace it with different ones. My only issue with this one is that this part right here is quite small, so you won't fit every model in here. I guess you won't fit every model in here either, but uh, this is even smaller. However, I think that the grip here is way better than here. Uh, it sits more nicely in your hand. And for that reason, I will put this painting handle into A tier as well. Most often you will see me use this thing, which isn't even a real painting handle. And the reason for that is very simple. Because it's very small, I can just put it in my hand like this, grip it tightly, and my hand can be in the same position. Uh, so when I am recording, the mini stays in focus. So while perhaps these two could be better for painting, when I am recording, this one is almost required for me. But because it's just a piece of cork with blue tech on it, I guess I will just have to put it into B tier. And finally, a rubber glove. I don't think that this is a requirement, especially if your hands are not sweaty, but if you are like me, it's actually necessary. And it will sit in B tier as well. When it comes to wet palettes, I have only ever used just two options, and that is homemade one and Redgrass Games one. When it comes to homemade one, just fill it with paper towel and parchment paper on top of it, 
add some water and there you go and it works just fine i do think that it is requirement to use wet palettes when you are painting minis so this one i will put into b tier but what i like way more are wet palettes from redgrass games this one is the small one and it is great if you are transporting stuff and you are painting somewhere else but i mostly use this one so you of course get your foam you get your pre-cut parchment paper or hydration paper sheets as they call it so you don't really have to prepare anything everything is already there and that's really what i love about redgrass games so furthermore they have also released this glass palette that you can insert inside and you can use it for oil paint. So as you can already tell, I really like Redgrass games. Everything is prepared and everything is ready to transport. So I will put Redgrass games wet palettes into A tier. When it comes to basing, your options are pretty much limitless. But let's compare some basic stuff. So quite obviously you have heard of texture paints. This one is from GW. And my issue with this is that for the price that you pay, you get very little amount of it. Otherwise it's fine, but it's quite expensive for what you get. And because of the low amount that you get, I will put it into C tier. On the other hand, when you get these texture paints from Vaiko, they are much better because you get much more. They are a bit different from GW texture paint, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I don't think that it's an issue. But the main thing about these two is the amount that you get. You get almost like 10 times the amount of this little pot, but you only pay like twice the price, I guess. And because of that, I will put it into A tier. Let's talk about the dry pigments now. You don't necessarily have to stick to Vallejo pigments, but any dry pigments are fantastic for us hobbyists. Just use this on your bases, and if you have, for example, ochre pigment, uh, you get very easily a desert base. I love these pigments. You can also use them to essentially make something rusty. There are many colors and they have so many purposes. I think that they truly deserve S tier. I mean, even if you are lazy, you can just paint your base with texture paint, then some color on that and put a dry pigment on that and it will look great. This is your standard white glue for terrain. I don't have anything special to say about it. So let's put it into B tier. Then we have grass tufts, like... Tufts are tufts, like what do you want? B tier. Now you could notice that I have like these special ones. Uh, these are from Green Stuff World, I think. And then I have a bunch of stuff from Green Stuff World, like for example, these leaves, which are fantastic. Uh, then I have these slates from Warlord games. And I won't really rank all of this because there is too much stuff to cover and it's highly situational. When it comes to varnishes, I don't even use them that often, but still I have like four of them that I somewhat use. These two are your standard matte and gloss varnishes that you can use for pretty much anything with your airbrush. I guess that you could use them with hand brush, but I didn't try it yet. And I have no issues with these, but there are certainly better alternatives. So these will fit very nicely in B tier. Now this one is excellent. When you use this one, you absolutely flatten the miniature and there is no sign of any glossiness on it. So you wanna use it before before you apply any metallics, otherwise it's gonna make them just gray. I think that this matte varnish is so good that I will put it into S tier actually. By the way, if you are using gloss varnish as well, maybe for oil washes, you wanna use this one afterwards so it will fix any glossiness. Now on the other hand, this one is terrible. And this is for one single reason. It absolutely destroyed my army. Never, ever, ever use this one with oil washes. Because this varnish is not acrylic. I think it's enamel based. It will fuse with oil paint and the white spirit in oil wash. And basically you won't be able to get rid of it. So maybe if you wanna use it for other purposes other than oil wash, be my guest but don't try to use it with oil wash. But then why are you using gloss varnish anyway? So absolutely F tier, it screwed me over. And the last one is gloss acrylic varnish. Now, if I had to apply oil wash for the entire army again, uh, I would use this one once more, nothing special. I think it will sit very nicely in B tier. When it comes to brushes, I won't rank all of them because that would be insane for one. And also I already have a video on that. And additionally, I don't think that we have to talk about cheap synthetic brushes. With that being said, we will start with cheap synthetic makeup brushes. I have used these for my dry brushing video and they are really cheap. I think that I bought them in Primark and the single purpose is for dry brushing armies and large pieces. Theoretically, you could buy smaller ones and dry brush those characters as well, but why would you waste your characters on dry brushing? But anyway, I think that I will place it into B. Now, speaking of dry brushes, I have also bought this Artis Opus dry brush set, 
and I am quite disappointed. And that's just because when you compare it to those makeup brushes, you get the same result and these are just more expensive. I mean, these might be higher quality, that's fair, but those makeup brushes can take some beating as well, so that's not a problem there. And if there is a tool that can do the same thing, just 10 times cheaper, I think that I prefer it much more. And because of that, I will place Artis Opus into C tier. What I am holding right now is Army Painter brush, and I have used this one in the past a lot, but that was just when I was starting out. You can also see that this is quite yellow. This is from all the sweat. Uh, nasty. And I think that this is quite the definition of average most of the bristles have fallen off already uh, but you know this is an old brush so it's not really usable anymore but when i consider how long have i used it for i think that it really deserves a b tier gw brushes are very similar to that but i think that citadel actually improved their quality in the last couple of years but still i think that it's quite expensive when you compare it to other premium brands so it will sit in b tier as well these three are technically considered to be brushes but you cannot really paint with them these have silicone own hats uh, and it is great for working with milliput or green stuff so if you are working with milliput and green stuff and you are sculpting i think that you will find value in these but other than that not really so these will fall into b tier as well last year i also tried these redgrass games brushes and i have to say that i really like them keep in mind that redgrass games also sends me stuff for free but truly genuinely i really like them and i paint with these uh, they have just two sizes so that's a minus i mostly stick to size two brush it has very nice tip and it can hold enough paint inside the bristles and that's always what you are looking for when you are getting new brushes uh, this one doesn't hold as much paint as you can see uh, but i still use it for eyes for example so i'm fairly confident with these and i will put them in a tier i am not sure if this brand is well known in the world uh, but this is Lineo brush and it's absolutely fine but it's way too small and what i used to think is that the smaller tip you have the more precise you are, uh, but that's not really the case. I painted pretty much entire Space Marine army with these, using them for edge highlights. And not only did I have to dip my brush into paint a lot, uh, because the tip was always dry, but it was also white scar. And if we know anything about white GW paints, they are dog shit. So that was a really unpleasant experience and this small brush didn't help. Now I still think that these are high quality brushes, I just wouldn't recommend getting these small ones. And these are actually way cheaper than those premium brands, so I will place it into A tier. Moving on, it's time to rank Winsor & Newton Series 7 brush. This one has everything you want from a brush. It has a nice tip, a little bit of a spring, and it can hold enough paint. However, my experience is that sometimes you buy new Winston & Newton Series 7 brush and the hairs will do something like this. And so if this did not happen, I would probably rank it into S tier, but because of that, I will have to still place it into A. And finally, this is Da Vinci Maestro Series 35. Uh, this one is pretty much the same as the Da Vinci brush. Uh, with the exception that it has longer bristles. Personally, I am used to painting with long bristles, but if you want shorter ones, you can use uh, Da Vinci Maestro Series 10. So for me, personally, I love this brush, so I will place it in S tier. When it comes to airbrush and accessories, it's very easy. First one is airbrush compressor. Now, obviously I don't have it here because it's too big, but my compressor is quite quiet. Um, it can store enough air inside. Uh, so I will rank it A tier. Then we have super cheap $5 airbrush and it's fantastic. It doesn't really feel cheap. Uh, you can do pretty much anything that you can do with any other airbrush. And because of the great price and value, I will rank it as A tier. I also think that you should get this airbrush holder because when you are not currently spraying, where are you gonna put your airbrush? Any sprayed leftovers can be stored in here. It's not a problem. Then you can simply pour it out. So I definitely think that you should get it. Uh, it's also quite cheap. I guess you can get it for 10 bucks or so. So I will put it into A tier as well. Airbrush thinner. Like, what the f*** do you want me to say? It's essential, so you have to use it, you have to get it. Uh, so yeah, B tier. Now, Flow Improver, I definitely use in a very different way than it was intended to be used. When I am done painting, I essentially run Flow Improver as an airbrush cleaner, so there is no paint stuck inside. For me, this is also a B tier. And do keep in mind that just because something is in B tier or A tier, doesn't mean that it's essential. 
But with that being said, everything that is essential is gonna be B tier or up. This little thing is a masking tape and you basically use it to block off any parts that you don't want to spray. You can use smaller one to paint easy hazard stripes for example and overall I think it's great if you don't have it already definitely get one. For me also an A tier. Now I don't know if you can see this properly but these are stencils so you can use one just like this then perhaps get rid of those inner parts but when you do get rid of those inner parts uh, then you can simply press it onto your model spray over that and then you have painted symbol and because it's quite problematic handling these and it's mostly one use item uh, unfortunately i will have to put them into c tier and finally we have premium infinity cr plus airbrush to be honest i didn't use this one a whole lot so i am not sure how great it is it definitely feels great in your hand uh, but other than that I cannot really see any difference when I'm spraying with it so I think that I won't rank it just yet uh, because it's too early to tell this is gonna be a bit of a special category but I think that it's worth mentioning after all this is hobby tools for Warhammer not just miniature painting when I used to transport my Warhammer army I used this foam and basically fit all miniatures into these little spots but if you have some spiky models, like let's say Drukari, you are in a trouble. Just put in there some witches or Kabbalite warriors and you will see that some of those more spiky parts will get torn apart. So I really don't like this solution. If you have like Space Marine army, I guess it's bearable, uh, but other than that, not really. So using foam as transportation means for me is definitely C tier. On the other hand, we have this magnetic case uh, that is from Battle Foam, and I really like this. However, it's quite heavy. It's still thousand times better than the foam solution, but because it's so heavy, uh, I will give it B. And with that being said, you also need some magnets. So simply take one of these and stick it on the bottom of the base. You might have to do your own research in regards to how big of a magnet do you need, but as a tool for transportation, these magnets are definitely A tier. And when you finally magnetize your miniatures, you don't just have to use magnetic cases, you can also use these Pokemon card tin boxes. And even if your miniatures aren't magnetized, you can just fill it with bubble wrap and put your minis inside of that. But if they are, it works. I mean, if you are transporting entire army, you will need more than one, obviously. But if you are transporting like a small warband or a kill team, this one is gonna be more than enough. And because it's so small that you can fit it inside your backpack, I will place it into A tier. When it comes to transporting brushes, I mostly use plastic straws and also usually rubber bands around it. You can also use these plastic tubes, uh, but if you don't have these, too bad. And this is really not a great way to transport your brushes, but it's the only one I had until recently. But I think that we will talk about that in the future. For now, this is C tier. And we have some more gear that I think is worth mentioning. First one is a 3D printer. This really depends on what's your budget and what kind of hobbyist are you. Uh, but for me, personally, getting a 3D printer is great because you can finally paint whatever you want. But if you are mostly hobbying for Warhammer, then you don't really see that much value in that. Perhaps you can 3D print some terrain pieces or something like that. Um, but overall, for me personally, I think that a 3D printer is A tier. Next, we have a lamp. Now, this one is absolutely essential item and if you don't have it already, get one. The current lamp that I'm using is from Neatfy and it's really great. However, there is one minor issue that I have and that's the lack of diffusion. It's not a huge problem, but it's there. And I think that the only solution for that would be if I had two of these lamps and I will still place it in A tier. But overall, you definitely need some kind of hobby lamp. Then we have this brush cleaner from Windsor and Newton. This is great if you are using oil paints as well as acrylics. I think that it's good if you have some dry paint on your brush, uh, but if that happens to you, then what are you doing? It's also less aggressive than using kitchen soap, so it's a nice addition that's definitely not essential. So it's a B tier. This is a tool that you are using for working with milliput and green stuff, and it does pretty decent job at that. And because of that, I will put it into B tier. And speaking of milliput, here it is. I actually like it way more than green stuff because it's cheaper. And overall, if you are sculpting or you are fixing some issues on your models or filling those gaps, 
uh, this is great stuff. But I don't really think that it's essential, not like this tier list is based on that, but still I will put it into B tier. Next we have Pipette. So I guess that this is also an airbrushing accessory. Uh, you can simply dip it into a contrast paint or ink and transport it from there to your airbrush. It's also very cheap. I have like 60 of these because it's so cheap, but I still don't think that it's quite at the level of a lamp or a 3D printer, so still a B tier. This Pigma Micron pen can be used for recess shading, especially for Space Marines. Now I don't think that this is better than an oil wash, uh, because oil wash is way faster, and with this it can come out a bit thick, uh, which is not good because you cannot fix it as well as the oil wash. I mean, you might like it, why not? But personally, I will place it into C tier. Stainless steel shakers. I think that these are useful if the pigment separates from the medium inside a paint pot. But other than that, you don't really need it. But with that being said, they make your life easier for those paints that are separating quite frequently. Uh, so let's place it into B tier. What we are looking at here is micro set solution and it's great for decals. So when you are placing decals on a Space Marine shoulder pad, uh, most often you will have to cut it a little bit so it can sit nicely there. But with this, you don't really have to do that. Simply cut out your decal, dip it into this, and then place it on a shoulder pad, and there you go. So if you are using plenty of decals in your army, I will definitely get this uh, and I will place it into A tier. I would get some bottles like these because you can easily fill it with some liquid that you are using quite often. For example, these ones are filled with water, so if I need to refill my wet palette or my airbrush, I can just go like this and like this and there you go. Once more, not an essential, but definitely improves your quality of life as a hobbyist. And I guess I will place it into B tier, maybe an A, uh, but B suits it more nicely. So guys, let me know down in the comment section if you like these types of videos where I just sit down, don't script anything and just talk. You can also tell me how wrong I am, but do keep in mind that this is just my opinion, my personal tier list, and this is not universal and doesn't apply to everyone. And with that being said, this is it for this video and see you in the next one. Bye!